No. I'm kidding. So. Thank you for attending tonight's meeting of the Westville City Schools Board of Education. The agenda will be displayed on the screens in the front of the room. You may also follow along by connecting to the district's website, wcsoh.org. Click on our district link and then select Board of Education, the Board Docs agenda, and join tonight's meeting. There will be two opportunities to address the board tonight. The first is agenda item 6.01. The first set of public comments is relative to agenda item 7.01 through 11.02. Please state the agenda items you are referencing at the beginning of your comments. And then the second opportunity is agenda item 12.01. There are sign-up sheets located on the table in the back of the room. Each speaker will have five minutes to address the board and a timer will appear on the screen. And with that, Ms. Marshall, will you please call, please call the roll? Mr. Bird? Here. Dr. Nestor Baker? Here. Mr. Velarde? Here. Mrs. Davidson? Here. Ms. Cotter? Here. Would everyone please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, at this time, I would like to make a motion to approve and recognize our students here for summer graduation from Westville Central, Westville North, and Westville South High Schools who have all completed all state and local requirements. Can I have a second? Um, yes. So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Thank you, President Cotter, members of the board. It's always a pleasure to get the opportunity to recognize graduates from Westville City Schools. Um, just the, uh, this is one of the highlights. Uh, this is the whole, sole reason we do what we do. And to get to recognize them, we welcome them and their uh, guests this evening. So, um, uh, members of uh, President Cotter, I'm going to go to the official stuff now. President Cotter, members of the Board of Education, distinguished former and current faculty and staff, honored guests, and proud families of the graduates of Central, North, and South High Schools. The state of Ohio establishes in law two requirements for earning a high school diploma, the successful completion of a rigorous academic curriculum, and proficient competencies in the uh, five disciplines that compromise, comprise the Ohio graduation test. Ladies and gentlemen, seated before you are the young men and women who have now satisfied those requirements. The administration of Westerville City Schools has verified and the Board of Education has unanimously approved their candidacy for graduation. And so it's with great pleasure as superintendent of Westerville City Schools that I confer to each semester graduate a Westerville City Schools State of Ohio Diploma of Completion. So now to commence to the uh, ceremony and the distribution of those fine things up here, the diplomas. Um, Mr. Reeves is going to welcome our three principals, um, I believe, and then each of them will offer a few words of congratulation. And as they finish their words of congratulation, they'll uh, 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 distribute their diplomas or at least recognize their graduates. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Um, if I could just cut in for a second, I'm yes. sorry. Um, could you please call the roll? Oh. Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mr. Velarde? Yes. Mr. Bird? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> President Cotter, members of the board, as Dr. Kellogg shared, this is a great day and the culmination of everything that we do with our children from the time they walk into our building until the time they receive their diploma. As I shared with the graduates and their family, we wish them congratulations. Um, this is a day to be celebrated and uh, we wish you well in your next steps. With that, I would like to introduce Tom Lanier, principal at Westerville Central, for a few words. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Uh, pre oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. I'm going to save a lot of time because I know Mr. Hensley has about a 20-minute speech that he's going to give <laughs> later this after, after we're done. 
Uh, President Cotter, Vice President Davidson, members of the Board of Education, Dr. Kellogg, Treasurer Marshall, uh, it gives me great pride to stand before you today to recognize our central student who received his diploma this summer. I also want to extend a, a, a congratulations to our um, students from North and South who also uh, were able to earn their diplomas this summer. Uh, it's truly a, a great um, achievement that you were able to do and, uh, and, and says a lot about your work ethic and what you've done to get here. Um, there's an old saying that says it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Um, as an athlete, as a, a you know somebody who's been involved in sports quite a bit, and in education, it really rings true. It's not how you start; it's how you finish. And it says a lot about you that you persevered, even though it wasn't going the way uh, the plan was supposed to go. You persevered, and here you are tonight, and you have your diplomas uh, to, to thank for your your work. So, congratulations for all that. Um, our graduate who is not able to be with us tonight is Zach Houston, and uh, Zach was able to earn his um, his credentials this week or this uh, this past summer. Uh, he's excited to receive his diploma. He's already received it, and he's ready to to move on for the next phase in his life. So. Uh, I thank the board for taking uh, the time to recognize our summer graduates. Uh, it's one of the really cool things that I think Westerville does that other districts don't necessarily do. Um, this is kind of how I started my year last year, and uh, it's a tremendous um, honor to be here and to, to celebrate this with you. I think it says a lot about the people on our Board of Education that you guys take this time to celebrate our graduates. So uh, I thank all of you for your time. Um, and especially, you know, I want to leave you with this. Uh, we love it when all of our Warhawks fly, and at this point in time, they're soaring. So thanks. Here's Mr. Yancey with his uh, Westmore North folks. Thank you, Mr. Lanier. I, too, will go quick to make sure Mr. Hensey has plenty of time this evening. <laughs> President Cotter, members of the Board of Education, Superintendent Kellogg, Treasurer Marshall. Uh, good evening. My name is Kirk Yancey. I'm the principal at Westville North High School. It is my pleasure to be able to publicly say congratulations to all of our graduates uh, tonight and wish you luck with all that you do from here. On behalf of the entire Westerville North learning community, uh, and all the other district employees who have affected your life, uh, please accept our congratulations for your accomplishment. It's a tremendous accomplishment. We are all very proud of the Westerville Central Warhawks, the Westerville North Warriors, and the Westerville South Wildcats who are becoming alumni this evening. I encourage you, as you move forth from tonight, uh, to push yourself to keep moving forward, regardless of the obstacles that you may face or failures you will endure from here. Remember to treat failures as an opportunity, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to get better. They are an opportunity that will teach you how to succeed. This is a great life, life lesson uh, to take with you as you move on to your next adventure, and I wish you the best of luck uh, in the future. Congratulations once again. Please know how proud we are of you for persevering and making it here tonight. Great job. Well done. Now it is my pleasure to introduce the graduates from Westerville North. First, the, the students who were unable to be with us tonight. If, we can, if I can just take a moment to recognize Sean Bonham, Jack Sisniewski, Destin Ferguson, Bikash Newpain, Gabby Tucker-McGee, and Jared Yoakum. All of those are graduates, uh, and I'd like to congratulate them. And our graduate who is able to be with us tonight, uh, Brandon Fomasang. You can come up, Brandon. Receive your diploma. Now it is my pleasure to turn the microphone over to Mr. Hinsey, who has a 30-second speech for us. Thank you, Kurt. Dr. Kellogg, President Cotter, uh, members of the board, uh, thank you for helping us congratulate our South students who have uh, made us really, really proud, and we want to extend our congratulations to them. Uh, dear summer graduates, uh, thank you for demonstrating one of South's core values, and that's perseverance. When things are hard, um, you, you don't want to do the work, you don't know what to do, or you're getting mixed messages, muscling through and doing it anyway, that's one of our core values. So, so thank you for setting a great example. And 
living life on your terms and following your own timeline. We have an early grad. Uh, we have people who are, who are summer grads. And we're proud of you for just doing it on your timeline. And, and that's important, that you're setting your agenda for you and, and no one else. Um, you define you. That, that's part of perseverance, too. So we're really, really proud of you. Uh, we wish you well in the future. Um, stay in touch because we're really, really proud of you. And um, thanks for being part of the Wildcat community. So if I'm going to first, like Kurt, recognize those who could not be with us today. First is Warda Muhammad and Clarissa Smith. Now for um, starting out with Nikayla James, who could be here. Come on up. Our next graduate is Mallory Meinhardt. And congratulations to Ashley Miller. We have another special recognition on the agenda, and I'd like to introduce Mr. Villardo to discuss that. Thank you, President Cotter. I will uh, make a special, we will re make a special recognition. I'm going to go to the podium and read that recognition. I think we're going to have the board uh, go back up front. I felt they needed the exercise to come back and then to go back up front. So I'll go to the podium. Uh, it's my honor to stand here representing the board for this uh, special recognition. This is a resolution of commendation for one uh, Mark Hersheiser. Mr. Hersheiser, would you please come to the uh, po po uh, podium here? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Hersheiser did not know about this recognition, and uh, we'll all pay the penalty for it later. But let me just uh, let me just read this to you, to a uh, to a man that all of us uh, and many people that you work with have tremendous respect for. Let me let me share this resolution of commendation for Mark Hersheiser. Whereas from November 2017 until July 2018. As the Westerville City Schools Board of Education conducted a search for its next treasurer, Assistant Treasurer Laura Hendricks was appointed, appointed pro tem treasurer. And whereas while continuing to fulfill the requirements of her own job, Hendricks tackled additional tasks with vigor and competence, incompetent, uh, encompassing the receipt, accounting for, and disbursement of all the funds of the school district. And whereas during this critical period of transition, Deputy Superintendent Mark Hersheiser stepped up to ensure that the educational process in the district continued without interruption. And whereas in addition to his own numerous responsibilities, 
Hershiser assisted Hendricks by handling the beverage contract request for proposal process, assisting with the budget process and the forecast, covering meetings when Hendricks was unavailable, offering invaluable advice with humor, it says humor here, <laughs> So I'm reading it. Advice with humor and wisdom and making time to help with anything she needed. And whereas Mark Hershiser cemented his reputation as the go-to person in the Westerville City School District by helping to create a smooth and comfortable leadership changeover as the newly appointed treasurer, Nicole Marshall, came on board. Therefore, be it resolved that the Westerville City Schools Board of Education and Superintendent commend Mark Hershiser for the hard work he does each and every day to make sure that the students and staff have the best possible opportunities to grow and succeed. August 27, 2018. It is with great pleasure that we uh, recognize you for the work that you have done and continue to do. Congratulations. Uh, we don't often do this, and perhaps we don't do it enough to recognize the great work that uh, many, many people in this district do. And as Mark will tell you, uh, it is uh, the team collective around him that uh, allows him to do this great work. So as you know, this is a recommendation, a resolution for you uh, and the team that you have around you. So one more time, please offer our congratulations. <laughs> Okay, uh, moving on to agenda item 4.01. Um, do we have any comments on the minutes for August 13th? What? I'll hold off on the minutes for a second. <laughs> Congratulations to all of our graduates today. Um, if you would like to stay for the meeting, you are more than welcome to. However, if you would like to go and enjoy the night with your friends and family, now would be a good time for you to take that as we take a minute to take a break. So. Also, uh, there will be pictures outside, so sit down. <laughs> give them an opportunity to take pictures outside when you leave the room, graduates. Again, congratulations. Mr. Hensey, if you would like to score points, I recommend you learn an important story about a certain football coach and a bear. Well, y it could be yours. I'm just saying. You don't notice how none of them want it. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> it went with them, I am sure. <laughs> I should go to Berlin's graduation this year just to hear him say it. Because you know he will. He only knows one story. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Um, moving on in the agenda. Uh, agenda item 4.01, uh, to approve the minutes as read for the regular meeting held on August 13th, 2018. Um, we don't normally do a motion to approve minutes. We just ask the board if they have any comments or questions. Okay, no comments or questions. Thanks, Mark. We'll go ahead and move on. Um, agenda item 5.01 is the superintendent report. Dr. Kellogg. Yes. 
Thank you, President Cotter, members of the board. Um, just a, a quick um, a briefing on an opportunity we have in front of us, and then I'll, I'll make a request from the board. But um, as you know, um, we, we are uh, part of a group, um, a par partnership group, which involves the school district, city of Westerville, um, Chamber of Commerce, Library in Otterbein, and we meet quarterly to discuss shared interests and shared opportunities. A while back, uh, one of the opportunities that came, came before us was um, contracting with a company to do a workforce assessment and a strategy study for Westerville proper. There's all kinds of data sets about workforce development needs in the region. Uh, this opportunity is very specific to the footprint of the school district and the chamber. Um, so the study itself will seek to assess the current workforce associated with Westerville, and that footprint is really the school district and the chamber, uh, and develop strategies designed to maximize resources to prepare the area workforce for future job opportunities. And so you can see there, the partnership for us is around, as a K-12 education institute, understanding current and future employment needs uh, for, for businesses in the region, and how we might align our programming to that and prepare kids with not just the technical skills for those jobs, but the soft skills that we talk about a lot. So it's some benefit for us. Uh, the study, um, as I mentioned, is being coordinated by those various entities that we refer to as, as partnership. Um, and, uh, that means Corley Boyett uh, Strategic Advisors is an established firm that conducts these kinds of studies. And in fact, they're involved very much with the point at Otterbein University in doing the study there, as well as uh, Westerville, the city of Westerville's economic development uh, strat strategic plan. The, 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 uh, the study will have four key steps. The first will be an evaluation of current talent and resources, and I believe a lot of that's going to be both quanti quantitative and qualitative. They'll actually be doing some uh, meeting with employers in the region to talk to them about their employment uh, needs um, and where that kind of watershed of employees come from. Uh, they'll do an anticipation of future talent needs and demands, an identification of gaps in anticipated talent pipeline, and some op and discuss opportunities and strategies to redirect and maximize available resources. And of course, we're one of those important resources. Um, I'm hoping as well that there may be, um, uh, as a, although we consider ourselves a K-12 institution that prepares students for the workforce, we're also a large organization that hires a lot of people. And so there may be some elements of this study that may have some relevance for us when you think about the variety of employee groups that we hire um, and what are the issues uh, for us as an employer too. Um, the, the entire um, process um, from start to finish should be about four months uh, till we have the study and they'll, they'll offer to do a presentation to the board when they're done. And then it includes 12 months of support for implementation from Boyette as well. Uh, um, the cost of the whole project that's being um, shared amongst a variety of entities um, is $57,800 is the number I have down. Um, we've been asked to make a contribution and based on um, the study, the magnitude of and the importance of us, um, what we think would be appropriate if the, if the board is willing, if there's a resolution to move forward, would be to uh, allocate about 5000 I'm going to ask for about $5,000 to support the study, uh, to get to, to partner up with the rest of our entities. Seems a number that everybody in the group is, thinks is fair for the school district. And so uh, if you have questions about the study or its, or its uh, intent or how we're involved, I'm happy to answer those. Um, what I'm hoping for is perhaps you'll put forward a resolution to support our um, cutting a check for that amount of money. Are you hoping for that this evening? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm like a teenager who, you know, <laughs> coming for his allowance. But um, if we need more time, we certainly can take more time. Um, but I'd like to move it forward if we can. So the resolution is not currently on the agenda, correct? Not yet, no. Okay, can so I? if I could move, we suspend the rules and consider a motion for a uh, resolution for $5,000 for a job study. Second. That's to consider it, right? So we'll Can you please to, call that's the That's to suspend yeah. the vote on the yeah. suspension, and then we'll put the resolution forward for the uh, for the 5,000. Can you please call the roll? Mr. Bird? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mr. Velarda? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. And as the rules are suspended, to forward a motion for $5,000 for uh, work study uh, that was presented to us by Superintendent Kellogg. I think we should have partnership. Um, if we get a second, we second. can open it for conversation. Got a second. 
So Tracy, um, I'm sorry. I just think we should add the word partnership to okay. it. So a resolution yeah. to approve a partnership and our state. contribution to be $5,000. Yeah, I think yeah. do we want to specifically state partnership with Westerville Chamber of Commerce? Westerville partnership. It's the Westerville partnership. Westerville partnership. Because partnership. Okay. it's more than chamber. Yeah. Right. Got it. To approve $5,000 to um, assist in funding the Boyette study in partnership with the Westerville partnership. <laughs> two partnerships in one sentence. In cooperation with the, yes, that's much better. I don't like two partnerships in one sentence. Too much partnership. Too much partnership. Um, so are we at the discussion for this? Yes. Discussion, yeah. Um, I like this idea a lot. I will be voting in favor of it. And one of the reasons is, uh, is the Westerville partnership piece of it. I love the fact that we have that Westerville partnership with Otterbein and Chamber and City. And I just, I, I love when we try to link together. Um, shared costs is obviously good, but shared um, thinking and outcomes and benefits and inputs and all of that and the fact that Boyette uh, where are they out out of where are they where are they out of that's a great question I don't have the answer to that where they're actually located um, something I can find out for you and, and send for you but I like the I'd curious research um, uh, would just be curious and I like the fact that they will come and do a, a presentation for us and workforce study and so that's really taking too long for me to say all that I, I, I really like this idea a lot I also like this idea a lot and fully support the partnership idea um, the partnership has been doing very well uh, as a means of bringing all of these entities together for several years but to choose to move the work of the partnership forward in this way is a different step onto a different level and it is one that I think uh, has significant benefit for each of the partners within the entities and it also gives us um, that added extra knowledge, uh, that added extra information, all of the data that we currently cannot get um, because it doesn't exist in a form that is workable for our particular geography. So I very much am in favor of it. Something like this has burbled around for years and it's time and I'm really glad to see it happening now and I want us to be part of it. Are there any other comments or questions? Very much appreciate the support. Can you please call the roll? Yeah. Mr. Bird? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mr. Villarda? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Okay, moving on to agenda item 6.01, public comments. We do have somebody signed up for public comments this evening. Of course, um, there's a limit of five minutes, which will be displayed on the board. Ms. Peg Duffy. My comments or questions uh, addressed address to agenda item 7.02. These came about from questions that people ask me and I was unable to answer. These deal with the scoreboard project. People asked, what school or schools does this go to? $6,000 from the activity fund. Someone asked, what's the source of this? Is this a pass-through of the Pepsi donation? Does this come from sales? Uh, there's just a lot of confusion, so we need some clarification on this. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I think they'll be addressed when we get to that agenda item. Moving on to agenda item 7.01, um, can I please have a motion and a second to approve the financial report and investments for July 2018? So moved. Second. Ms. Marshall? 
uh, President Cotter, members of the board, what you have in front of you is the July 2018 uh, financial statements. And July is the first month of the new fiscal year, so the numbers are a little smaller than what they have been. Um, so year-to-date receipts for July was uh, $23 million. Year-to-date expenditures were $14.3 million. Uh, an unencumbered fund balance, and this is the general fund, uh, was $109 million to $44. Year-to-date receipts for all funds was $27.8 million. Year-to-date expenditures were $19.1 million. And an unencumbered fund balance for all funds was $125.5 million. Any questions or comments? Can you please call the roll? Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Mr. Bird? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mrs. Cotter? Yes. Moving on to agenda item 7.02. Um, can I please have a motion and a second to approve a, re a resolution to approve the purchases in accordance with ORC 5705.41, Section D1, and Board Policy 6320? So moved. Second. Ms. Marshall? Yeah, President Cotter, members of the board, what you have in front of you is um, traditionally called then and now purchase orders. Uh, so this is where a an invoice is dated prior to a purchase order being put in place with the district. Um, the money was available um, in the budget for these expenditures, and it's over $3,000, so I'll need the board's approval in order to pay these. Uh, the first one is for the challenge day for November 12th. Uh, the event actually isn't until November, but they billed us in March for whatever reason, so it's out of this year's budget and it is paid from a 300 activity fund. And then the second one, well, I'm sorry, the second one is the Challenge Day project. And this, the first one is the um, scoreboard project for Central High School. And it is also paid out of a student activity fund, the 300 account. Any questions or comments? So this is just an issue where the invoicing and the purchase order timing are off, and that's why. It's the timing. Yeah, yes. it's the timing. Stuff that's already been budgeted. Right. Okay. Um, can you please call the roll? Mr. Bird? I, I believe there's a question from the floor. But it's, it's a pass-through, right, for these two items? I believe they are. Um, I'm not familiar with Challenge Day. So challenge day I is think you are. Yeah. <laughs> so you could probably answer that question better than I can. I'm not familiar with challenge day. I'm sorry. Yes, and I, I guess I was just trying to make sure Peg's question was answered. Okay. So yes, I know it's a pass through for challenge day, but yeah, and it would be the same thing with scoreboard project. Okay. Yep. With the central high pass throughs. Did we answer your questions? These are not, and I want to reiterate what Jerry was saying. These are items that had been previously budgeted for, but we are catching up with the purchase orders. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Okay, can you please call the roll? Mr. Bird? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mr. Villarda? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Sorry, I have too many papers up here tonight. Um, can I please have a motion and a second to approve item 8.01 through 8.10? So moved. Second. Okay, Dr. Hopkins, come on up. Thank you, President Cotter, members of the board. Dr. Kellogg, I would like to present for your consideration the personal consent agenda. Some of the highlights included in this agenda are as follows. We have one retirement. Uh, Maureen Winters, secretary at Walnut Springs Middle School. I'd like to th publicly thank her for 13 years of service. We'll certainly do a more formal recognition later in the year, but I certainly believe she deserves a couple of opportunities to be recognized. We have eight resignations, primarily from classified positions, a number of one-time payments, 
units that cover staff participation in a wide range of professional learning opportunities and other district events. We have three teachers who required some short-term contractual status changes due to license renewals, the employment of eight individuals in various classified positions, and one licensed teacher. As well, we also have some employment and adjustment to a number of licensed supplemental contracts and classified pupil activity programs. One other thing I'd like to draw to your attention to is um, some wording under 8.9 and 8.10. There's language requesting that all previously approved new employment salaries shall be adjusted to reflect the 2018-19 school year contracts. This is a general housekeeping item since, as you're aware, we approved many um, hires and you know some approval items that took place during the negotiations. So like I said, this is just a kind of a housekeeping item to ensure that we adjust all previously approved salaries to the recently approved salary levels. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay, can you please call the roll? Mr. Villarda? Yes. Dr. Nesterbaker? Yes. Mr. Bird? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Okay, moving on to agenda item 9.01, policy 2460. Can we please have a motion and a second to approve this policy? So moved. Second. Are there any questions or comments about the policy? I think this is just adding the website location. Okay, can you please call the roll? Dr. Nesterbaker? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Bird? Yes. Mr. Villarda? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Okay, there's nothing for 10.01. Moving on to agenda item 11.01, .01, donations. Can I please have a motion and a second to approve the donations? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? Of course, we're always very thankful for our donations. Can you please call the roll? Mr. Villarda? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Bird? Yes. Dr. Nesterbaker? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Okay, on to agenda item 11.02, resolution to approve bus lease agreement. Can I please have a motion and a second for that? So moved. Second. Okay, Mr. Dorn. Good evening, President Cotter, Vice President Davidson, members of the board, Dr. Kellogg and Mrs. Marshall. We received the request from Southwestern City Schools to use five of our school buses to transport students at the beginning of this school year. This is not too unusual as you may remember that recently we had lent buses to Canal Winchester Schools. Southwestern's fleet was not able to be fully prepared and inspected due to a quantity of their buses undergoing repairs at the start of school. We are able to assist them at this time due to the number of buses that we have available versus the number of routes that we are currently running. ODE recommends that we have about 20% more buses than current routes so that we can make repairs and run field trips without impacting day-to-day -day operations. Right now we have 99 routes and 120 buses, so we hit the 20% threshold and are in position to assist our neighbors as our buses are in good shape at this time of year and we do not have any heavy demand for field trips while our bus routes are being run. The terms of this lease agreement include minimum insurance requirements, maintenance requirements, and a cost per mile for use. Southwestern has requested the buses to be available until September 8th, as noted in the lease agreement. However, they hope to return several or all of them by the end of this week. Although policy 7530 allows for the superintendent to authorize the lending of this equipment to Southwestern, you have a resolution in front of you that formalizes the terms of the lease agreement, and it is recommended that you approve the motion before you. Any questions or comments? No? Okay, can you please call the roll? Mr. Villarda? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Bird? Yes. Dr. Nesterbaker? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Okay, moving on to agenda item 12.01. We do not have anybody signed up for public comment for this particular agenda item. Moving on to 13.01, board comments. Anyone have comments? Okay, um, 
Agenda item 14.01, the board will meet in regular session on Monday, September 10th at 6 p.m. and a work session on Tuesday, September 18th at 6 p.m. here at the Early Learning Center. Um, this time we can move on to agenda item 15.01. Can I please, ha please have a motion and a second to consider the employment or compensation of a school official? So moved. Second. Can you please call the roll? Dr. Nestbaker? Yes. Mr. Velarda? Yes. Mr. Berg? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. And we do not anticipate having any business after the executive session. So um, just to let people know, thank you all for coming this evening. 639.